Welcome to Foodcast. I'm your host, Rick, and today we're going to talk about the steps in writing a proper CV. Chefs are fantastic at expressing themselves throughout food most of the time. But when it comes to explaining and expressing themselves in a written or even verbally, they are the closest you will ever get to communicate with a caveman. Throughout my career as a chef, I had the opportunity to interview thousands of people. The majority of them were chefs. What did they all have in common? They can't write a resume that shows what they can do and that simple effort can lose them a job where they would be a fantastic fit or in the majority of the situations. I do evaluate them less than they are worth. This is the primary reason why many talent cooks find themselves financially trapped. What do you think if I say I have a solution? But first, I must inform you of the most prevalent errors. Let's start with a fundamentals. Make a typical chef CV to be used as an example. Chefs typically begin at the top with their name, phone number, and email address. Follow that with their experience, which normally include the year, name of the company where they worked, and position held. And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, some of those encounters may include a description of some of their responsibilities at that company. Follow that incredible resume there is normally some strange description that varies from hobbies, if he or she drives, and from time to time they place their education level and if they speak another language. That is, in a nutshell, what you should anticipate from a chef. Thankfully, nowadays we get soft copy 99% of the time. Back when individuals apply for a job in person, it was fascinating to see how the resume arrives in your hands. Sometimes I receive CVs that I thought the candidate had given to his dog to chew on and then try to flatten it up, fold, and hand it over to the potential employer. However, with advance in technology and some platforms such as LinkedIn, that are designed to assist people in filling out their CVs in a uniform manner. I believe that the rule does not apply to chefs. I must state that we are a whole different breed. As I point out, I believe that we should have module courses in schools that teach students how to promote themselves to other people in the form of a CV. Let's pause for a moment, grab a pen and a paper, and I will teach you how to construct the best CV in order to land the job of your dreams. First, write your name at the top of your CV, followed by your contact information, phone number, and email. Pay attention to your email. It reveals a lot about you. I have seen emails that you wouldn't believe exist. So, chefs, please, please establish an email that is only for your work and name it anything along the lines of your name. Nothing like Salsa in the Hole, Cannabis Chef, or any other creative email you may have. Just below that, I recommend you write something short and nice about your career and what you expect from your new position. And please do not brag or declare you want something unattainable. Instead, push yourself to remain professional. Below that, indicate your availability for an interview. For example, weekdays, morning period. After that, you can begin talking about your experience. And the best way to do so is in one line. In the left-hand side, you put the month you start and plus the year, hyphen, month, 
you ended the employment plus the year, all in the left side. The center of the line, the name of the property, and far right the position you hold. On the follow line, in di directly below the property, write the location, for example, Dublin, Ireland. Give a line space and explain four to five bullet points what your responsibilities were in this position. What I recommend is that you put your most recent three or four jobs in this format. After that, you just put your experience in the simple format with the date you start and finish, the name of the property and the position you held so that if the potential employee wants some more information, they contact you for an interview. After this area, it's a good idea to include the education section with any courses or certificate you have. Please don't include in irrelevant matters. And the most effective approach to place those courses and certificate is first enter the entity name, then the course or certificate name, and finally the year you complete the course or certificate in the line below. Remember, that only if you speak more than one language, you should include in the last section of your CV. There is no use in including hobbies or interests in your CV because you are introducing yourself for business, not for friendship. If your possible employer is curious in your interests, it is best if they contact you for an interview. In a nutshell, that is how you construct a CV. The bonus point is what will make your CV stand out and lend you your ideal job. Stop sending your CV everywhere like there is no tomorrow in order to boost your chances. Considering mailing your CV as you were dating, you do not go down the road flirting with everyone in the same way until someone, visibly desperate, agree to date you. What do you believe the outcome of that relationship would be? Please, seek me medical assistance if you are this type of person. Would you use the same pickup line if you just flirted with folks you truly believe are a good match for you? I believe not but you may modify your speech slightly to match that person's characteristics. Your CV is identical, and when you read the job description to see what they are looking for, example, we are looking for a passionate chef with at least five years' experience in a high-end restaurant who works well as a part of a team has a strong sense of organization and preferably has experienced cooking over an open fire. What this means is that you should use keywords on your CV that correspond to the job advertisement, such as team player, organized, high-end, passionate, and so on. Typically, the person who writes the advertisement is the same person who will review your CV, which creates an automatically bond with the recruiter, which is like music to their ears. Furthermore, the job description shows you what they are lacking and what they want. So, if you follow this strategy, you will meet their demands and they will be more likely to hire you. With those little improvements, you will be able to reach out to your potential new employer more effectively. The final point is how you act. How many times I had chefs showing up to, for an interview dressed as if they were going to paint their shed, dress casual, formal, and when you sit for the interview, Imagine you are in, at a police station being questioned. That's the posture that you should have. Don't relax on the chair. Be professional. Don't curse. 
and don't bring up any unpleasant aspect of your prior employers. Anything you say, a part of a career advancement or a higher financial package should be considered a red signal. So be careful what you say. If you follow those suggestions, I guarantee you will get a better job offer and be happier at work. Since then, you choose where you want to go, not the another way around. Hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to smash that like, follow, share button. This is Foodcast, where you watch or listen to your podcasts and more. <laughs>